Hi, Eva here. Today we are going to paint a very loose interpretation of poppies and uh, I have um, some poppies growing out in my yard and I love poppies and I've been watching them in my neighbor's yards as well this summer and uh, uh, the SAA Society for All Artists, British um, Artist Society, they have a competition out called uh, Paint a Poppy Challenge to celebrate the um, anniversary of the um, end of World War One. So um, I thought let's just paint some poppies. We've been painting poppies in my classes and it's a lot of fun and um, let's get started. So you'll have to do your own sketch. I'm not going to give you a sketch but I'm going to um, post the um, pictures that I have used as a inspiration for you and um, if you need a if you need more help you can always google red poppies and a gazillion poppies are gonna you know turn up so no excuse you can do it and this is not a botanical rendering we're just giving the impression of a poppy so you know my usual thing I always like to dab out my pencil lines the only thing that's going to be fairly precise is going to be this uh, little uh, seed part or the stamens uh, and the stamens here. So you can see it's just basically a little cylinder. I'm going to use my drawing gum uh, high precision marker, masking marker from PPO. Uh, that's now available also um, at um, Jerry's Adorama, just bought one there. Last time I bought, well, I bought my first one and I have a review of it on my channel. You can look that up if you want to. Um, I bought it actually from the SAA in England and I live in the States, so you know, I had to pay a little bit for the shipping. But now they are available, and then you know, my own art supply store here in Reno, Nevada. They I showed them the marker and they um, they got it home, so they have it available if you live in my neighborhood. Um, and as I say, now Jerry Sadarama also have them, so I like it for smaller and uh, areas, and then. Um, of course for detail work, you know, makes really nice lines and uh, it dries quite quickly because it um, goes on not too thick. So I think I almost got this filled out and I don't mind if I have some little holes in my masking here um, because, you know, these seed parts or yeah stamens um, they are you know out in nature they're not like flawless there that's all gonna have to let that dry and then we're gonna get to painting alrighty masking fluid is dry which is very important and I'm just gonna use my little travel palette here with the mission gold colors in I just did a YouTube with uh, how I did the um, the little guide for the inside uh, uh, of this uh, travel palette. So I have a bunch of reds in this particular palette so that's why I thought it would be kind of fun to use it. Um, so let's start with this one here which is the vermilion which is an orangey red very strong reminds me a little bit of uh, a cadmium color Anyway, which I don't paint with normally, but today is the day to uh, try something new. So rinse that out of my brush and then I just want to get all my puddles ready first. And then here's the next one which is called Permanent Red. And you can see it's more of a true red. And rinse that out. Put that over here so I don't have to reach over the camera. And what else do we have here? Okay, so then we have a permanent rose. So that's a pinky. 
pinky color, pink color. So let's put that out, rinse it out with my brush. And we have one more red, and that one is Rose Matter, they call it. I do not think it looks like the Rose Matter in other brands, but never mind. To me, it looks a little bit more like Alizarin Crimson, which is also a color I don't paint with that often. But that doesn't matter. And then I think I do want a little bit of a yellow. So which one do I want? I think I might go for this Indian yellow. So warm yellow. Put a little bit out here. It doesn't look all that attractive in the palette, but it looks really pretty. Uh, when you dilute it with a lot of water. So I think it's maybe a little bit closer to uh, the transparent yellow that I really like in the Winsor Newton watercolors. All right, here we have it. Oh, one more thing I need for the outside. What do I want? What do I want? I want... Uh, I think I want this one. It's a really turquoisey blue. Let's put that here. That would be pretty, I think. Yeah, let's try that. And there. Try to make sure it doesn't run into the reds. That's the thing about, you know, being on the little travel palette. And now I have my towel. Yeah, so I put my towel here in the mixing, the other mixing area, just because uh, I would like to have it so that you can see everything I'm doing. Because it's actually important to see how many times I go on this water control station, as I like to call it. Boy, oh boy, that blue I picked, it's um, Peacock Blue from Mission Gold. I usually use the Peacock Blue from uh, Holbein on my regular palette. But it sure is staining. Did you see how many times I had to go back to get it out of the brush? All right, let's get started. So I'm gonna put water on pretty much the whole uh, paper. However, first I'm putting it on out here, more or less outside the petals. you see that? And then I'm going to put it in here. And I wouldn't mind if I get a couple of areas on the edge of the petals, not down there, where there's maybe a little bit of white uh, when I'm, it's all said and done. Can you see I have some dry spots? Oh, here. All right. And then let's go in, get some color on. Um, let's get some of that red on here. A little bit more of the, put a little bit of that yellow on some of the edges here. I think would be really good. There, get a little bit of pink, get a little bit more of that red. The orangey red, vermilion it was called. And uh, get a little bit of that really dark. Rose matter. And now, before it settles in and gets too hard edged here, where it's hitting the dry, I want to go in and make sure that it, I don't really want any hard edges right at this point. And here. So, that's the flower. Now I'm going to go in with a bigger brush. Um, 
and put some, ooh, that's strong, huh? Very strong. All right. A little bit more up here. And I think I want to go in with a clean brush and just make sure I don't have anything too harsh, too hard lined. See, that's kind of fun. I think I'll leave it like this. Couple of little green areas here. Just a little bit for now. All right, I'm gonna have to leave that now and let it dry and then we'll carry on and before I do that I'm thinking maybe I want to pick up a couple of a couple of um, highlights if I still can you know that's with a thirsty brush so you know I squeeze out all the water make sure that it's The brush is clean, just damp, and see if I can pick up a little bit of pigment where I think I want it lighter. There. This one here. Yeah. Like that. All right, I think that can work. Let's see. Yeah, I like it. All right. One more here. There. Now I'm going to leave it alone, let it dry. And see, i got some little white sparkles here and there. I think I'm going to like that. So we'll let it dry and then we're going to go in and uh, just put a little bit of this definition on and then we're going to take the masking off and do more detailed on the seed pot. But before I do that, I almost forgot. Now that it's beginning to dry, let me get some of the um, indigo. I'm going to put a little bit of the red in there. And let's go in right here. before it dries on me completely and get in some of this. I, I like to do that while it's still a little bit damp because can you see how it's I get those fussy edges that those are impossible to get later on so that's actually quite important so enough and now I'm going to let it dry. So um, I really, really like how my my poppy dried. I think it's already um, looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the masking fluid. I'm going to define it a, a couple of the edges, and that's where I have to be careful not to uh, overdo it. So I think I'm going to start with. Um, defining a couple of the edges and um, basically I'm going to find so it's the, the um, outer edge of a petal and then put something dark uh, underneath there on the petal below and then uh, lose the edge to um, kind of pull it out so let's see here I, I kind of see an edge here so let's do that one um, and I'm going to use probably a mixture 
of my permanent red and my permanent rose right here. So, and I'm just going to do a little tiny bit at a time. Just like that. And then right away with a clean damp brush, I'm going to go in and loose the edge. And make sure I loose that edge completely. There. Let's take a look at that. How does that look? That looks pretty darn good. Alright. Well, so far so good. Um, I see another edge up here that I think could be good to emphasize. I'm going to go just like here. And same idea. Loose the edge. I'm going to do like this. When I have those little white sparkles, I want to use them because I really like them. So here. And can you see I'm not trying to define the whole petal. Just a little tiny bit. And then I take a look. And then I see if that was enough. It's a little stripy looking, so let's just run that out. There. There's that. And I definitely see another little edge here. There. Clean brush. And I go in from the dry side. I hope you can see that. I go in from the dry side. And uh, then just get my tip, that stamp. Don't have it dripping wet, then it's going to run away from you. There. Maybe going like that. And rinse your brush with your brush the way you are losing the edge a lot because as soon as it gets um, gets some pigment on it starts depositing it, depositing that pigment and uh, you keep spreading the pigment around so you've got to rinse it off so I found another edge here and uh, again Make sure I lose that edge. And let's see how we're doing. Yeah, definitely um, feeling like I'm getting I'm getting to um, define. And so here I feel I need to be darker. So I'm gonna go in and get some of that rose matter on too from this area and just a little bit like that and loose that edge and it goes into that darkness and maybe around there would be good and I think if I could kind of define a little bit of an edge there would also be good so and again make sure that I lose that edge. I think I want to do a little tiny bit right there. I don't know if that noise that I hear is is um, also picking up on on this uh, taping is some little animal I think and I have been out several times and looked and see if I could figure out what's going on out there but so far I haven't seen anything just hear that noise of somebody being busy doing something and I hope they're not doing something I don't want them to do. Out on that side of my house I have my kayak hanging on the wall. So I'm just, um, you know, finding little spots where I think 
um, it would be nice to define a little tiny bit more. Let's take a look. So far so good. And uh, let's see here. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling we're getting pretty close to where I should just uh, give it a rest. What do you think? Maybe I can define. I like that white edge here. So if I can kind of make that into the edge of a petal. That would be good. There. And then this one could continue down like that. There. Just a little bit like that. Yeah. I like that. So, I think I should probably let this dry and um, hmm, I'm just seeing something here that could be could maybe make that look like it's curving out this way. Put a little bit of darkness on there and then lose it so I don't lose that lovely light spot here. Let's see how did that work. Yeah. Okay, I think my feeling is, you know, better better start while I'm ahead. I have a little bit one here I feel that could be advantageous to kind of suggest an overlap there. Yep. All right. I'm going to follow my own advice and give it a rest. And uh, once it's dry, I'm going to go in and I'm going to take the masking off. And then we're going to paint in the uh, center there, the stamen or seed pot, and um, doctor up those uh, d that darker area a little bit. And then um, I think it'll be done. All right. So... It has dried and I got my little kneaded array, not my kneaded array, so my, um, oh, it's called the Masking Fluid Picker Upper, which is a rubber cement eraser. I don't know why it has such a strange name, but it does. And here we are. Feel, yep, it's all off, so there it is. Um, and now I can paint this little part with the stamens on. I lost uh, my lines, but I don't care because I can make them up. Um, so these, um, these little seed pots or stamens, they come in different colors on different um, types of poppies. But um, because we have red here, um, I like to make mine green because red and green are complementary colors and the whole idea is you know I kept the all the petals really really loose and the background really really loose um, so I want to put the detail in this little seed pot so I put water on the bottom part of it and I'm just gonna you know have all these puddles over here so uh, I'm just gonna use this blue here, which I do believe is the cobalt blue, even though it's not our standard cobalt blue by any stretch of the imagination, I can tell you that much. Uh, so here, I'm just going to put the blue on first, down here at the bottom, and really bring that top part of that petal that's... Um, obscuring the bottom part and I have one of my yellow puddles here I think that's uh, Indian yellow let's take some of that and I'm just gonna put that over I love to make my greens this way I know I could mix myself a green but how boring is that 
not how I enjoy painting. So here we are. See what a beautiful transition you get when you do it this way. I can highly recommend it. That way. Look at that. I love it. So if I love it, I leave it. All right, so I think that's all I want to do there. And, um, hmm, eeny, meeny, miny, I'm kind of debating if I want to put in, if I want to put in a stem. Maybe I do, right here. So I just use the same glue. And I did it on dry. There. And I'm just going to go in, put a little bit of that yellow on. And maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. I'm not crazy about it, but. Oh well. Um, feeling maybe I want a little bit more yellow over that here. There we go. And uh, let's see here. I like that better. I lift it out a little bit. I thought it was just a little too dark, all solid and dark and not very attractive. All right, I can live with that. There we have it. And now I think um, the top is probably dry enough and then I'm going to go in and do the next kind of part of this um, seed pot. And so I'm going to put in a little bit of this more yellow green on here. And on purpose I'm putting it on while the bottom part is probably still a little damp. I don't mind at all if they run together a little tiny bit. Can you see how I did it? And I left a little bit of a white edge there wasn't really, really planned, but I like it, so my motto is, if I like it, I leave it. So let's go in and do it a little greener here on this side. And maybe put a little bit in like that. Just dabbing in, just for fun. And then we're going to leave it like that for just a little tiny bit. And then we have the top part. The top part... I feel probably I want to use one of my little bit warmer yellows, this one, which they call permanent yellow deep. It has a little red in it, so I know that it's not going to be as bright a yellow as the yellow I have on the body of the seed pot. I think that might look nice. See, here is where we can put some detail in. We didn't want detail in the rest of it. At least I didn't. Um, you can do whatever you like, of course, as always. So, there. That's a good beginning. Let's just say it like that. It's a good beginning. All right, so in the meantime, while that kind of does its thing, um, I think. I need to define the dark stamen area a little bit more and I think I use this one over here, I use some indigo with a little bit of the uh, rose matter and I made a really really dark color. I want to go in and just fine tune a little bit here. And 
You see that area needed a little cleanup, and then here is also going to need a little cleanup because you know these petals they are in front of so it goes down like that. They are in front of that's the front petals, and so um, these uh, stamen parts, they are being obscured by the petals that are in front. So I'm just cleaning up those edges. And then you can see I'm just putting some little dabs in, because they also have these little um, at the end of those stamens, there's like little little things on them. I'm, I'm not a botanist, so I don't know what they're called. Sure, if I was in class, Lori would tell me, or Linda would tell me, they know this stuff. So, all right. So I um, I used my mister bottle to just mist in a little bit, so that they're not too perfect. Perfection, you know, is our enemy in these things. And so, very hard to do with dots without making them too regular. So, I always like to mess up my dots with just a little bit of uh, some drops of water here and there. I think that turns out better. And let's see. Hold it up so you can see. It actually helps me uh, look at it in the camera because... Uh, then I have a little bit more of an overview of what it actually looks like. So, dab it up a little bit. I feel I need a little bit more over here. A little heavy on this side. There we go. It goes up around there. And I could also do some little lines. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. There. Okay. And there would also be some of these actually in front of this thing. This thing being the... I think it's the seed part. Maybe it doesn't have seed in, seeds in it yet. It's trying to attract critters that can... Uh, Make that happen, I guess. And some little tiny lines can go up there too. There. I like it better. I think it's getting better. All right. So up until now, I've used my number eight because it has a nice tip. I'm using those uh, Mimic Squirrel brushes. They're really good. And so now I think I might go to my liner brush. To, you know, skinny. It's number two. Skinny long hair. Uh, long haired brush. And uh, let's go in and load it up with a little bit of that dark mixture I did of indigo and rose matter. And I could go in and just see, hint at a few more little uh, of those little lines set. There. There we go. And then I think I want to create um, a little bit more of a dark greenish color. So if I put a little bit of yellow in to this indigo over here, get a little bit of the blue one, whatever blue that is. It looks like peacock. Whatever blue or it could also be the cobalt. It's, so it's kind of a blackish green. This little puddle is what I'm working with. And I roll my long skinny uh, liner brush or script brush or rigger brush, whatever you like to call it, in it. And so now I'm going to go in and indicate some of that pattern that's on the seed head. And I had that lovely skinny white line, so I want to use that since that was a lucky 
there was a stroke of luck. And so I'm using that and putting a little tiny bit of shadow underneath it and picking it up over there. Uh, and then um, up here, I'm just indicating there's kind of like this flat area at the top. And then there's some little, um, it looks almost like slices of pie. has these um, markings on. So like that, can you see that? And so I don't want to overdo it, but I need to get some of that on. That's the fun part. And that's the only place where we're putting a little, you know, kind of botanical um, details on. All the rest is just uh, kind of free flowing. And um, I don't know, I'm kind of feeling it looks pretty darn good. And uh, the worst thing you can do with these types of paintings is to keep working on them. Because that's when they get overworked and it's, you know, the fun goes away and, it, you know, the lively, spontaneous feeling goes away. So I think I will heed my own um, advice and call it a day. So I hope you had fun doing this and I'll see you soon in another video. Um, take care. Happy painting. And see you soon. Here's a close-up of the final painting so you can see the details. Thank you so much for watching and uh, please subscribe to my channel Eva Nichols Art.